Okay, so we'll start the introductions. I think uh, anyway, we'll we'll have a couple of minutes. Uh, and we'll we'll probably have a little more people. So uh, first of all, thanks uh, to everybody who's uh, joining us. Um, I uh, I want to welcome everybody. It's uh, it's a wide, uh, diverse uh, community here, all coming from both uh, uh, the uh, Israeli club, the Israel Working Club, who's hosting the event, and with with Bird, of course, and also other clubs. Uh, uh, that we know, uh, be it from the Boston area, Philadelphia area, all over the world. I know the lot, some of the latter community are here as well. Uh, so uh, great to see you all. And uh, the purpose of uh, this event is to educate us, uh, educate us all on the this uh, wonderful tool called the Bird Foundation. And it's hosted by, uh, we're hosting here Eitan Yudelevich, who is the um, uh, head of the organization who's been there uh, for quite a while. And uh, he can give, give us all the uh, information about this uh, this tool, uh, the background for it, the uh, purpose of uh, what uh, what we could do with it, uh, and, and also give you guidance a little bit of uh, who should uh, think about applying uh, and so on. Uh, Ethan and I uh, actually discussed this before, and we'd like this to be uh, a real uh, venue of uh, discussion. Uh, the Everybody on the call uh, who, who joined this the Zoom meeting is potentially uh, a... Uh, uh, somebody who could apply, and if there's anything that either interests you uh, on on uh, practical manners, of course, not into details. Uh, you could uh, follow up with Ata and offline, but uh, any question is is legitimate uh, and uh, very highly encouraged. So. Um, Ethan knows the type of people here, and he's not expecting uh, any easy questions. So no problem. He's he's uh, welcoming any of those, and the discussion is welcome. So uh, just a few words about Ethan. Ethan is uh, uh, at the public service uh, with Bird for a very long time, and before that he was uh, doing R and D in uh, various organizations here in Israel. So he knows R and D in and out. Uh, and the collaborations with uh, big uh, big organizations in the U.S. is naturally not uh, foreign to him, even from his previous lives, but uh, nowadays even more so. So, uh, Eitan, I'll, uh, I'll give the stage to you, and uh, we'll take it from there. But th thank you for uh, for hosting the event and uh, giving us the explanation more about, about BIRD. Okay. Thanks a lot, Gil. Uh, thanks to for hosting, uh, hosting me here. Uh, it's great to be with you. So let me, I will, I will use the presentation to start. Okay, so we have uh, some slides and please feel free to ask me questions. Uh, probably it's better to do that uh, close to the end. But if anyone has an urgent question uh, uh, during the presentation, I'm happy to, to reply, um, more than happy. So can we see the, sli the slides? Yes, Gil? Uh, yes, now we can. Okay, wonderful. So, uh, the Bird Foundation, Bird, for those that may not know, I assume that most of you know, is actually an acronym by National Industrial Research and Development Foundation. And uh, the foundation actually is close to 45 years old. It was established in 1977, May 1977. So you can say that it's a quite a mature organization, but I can tell you that uh, it's still very dynamic and uh, we keep updated. Uh, our mission, it's uh, stated here, and maybe the two most important words are mutual benefit. Everything we do is for mutual benefit of the uh, United States and Israel. It also says industrial R&D, which is pretty you know, old fashioned uh, terminology. But the meaning of this is that it's not uh, focused on academic research, but it's focused on uh, what we would call today um, innovation R&D. We are fortunate to have a very stable funding, basic funding, uh, because an endowment was provided by the two governments. And so uh, we are not dependent for our basic funding on any uh, uh, annual budgets or appropriation which is very important for such an organization, is maybe one of the most important elements of uh, the Bird Foundation. So we have a special status in the US, according to this executive order, uh, the, in, in the US, it's an international organization, 50% owned by the US. And in Israel, there is a special law, the Bird Foundation law, um, signed, as you can see here, by Prime Minister 
Menachem Begin and by the president Ephraim Katsir and by then Minister of Industry, Trade and Tourism, which today is Ministry of uh, Economy and Industry, uh, Igal Ogol. And this, this law is a very important law for the way we function. Behind this law is the agreement of the, of, uh, between the US and Israel uh, signed in 1976. Uh, we have a board of governors, which is like a board of directors, uh, have three representatives, three Israeli representatives, three US representatives, and has a co a co two co-chair. The Israeli co-chair is the chief scientist of the Ministry of Economy and Industry. And in the US, the US co-chair is the senior person from NIST. NIST is part of the Department of Commerce. So actually, uh, these two people are the ones that chair the board of directors. And the other people are senior officials from both uh, the US and Israel. Of course, these are not technical people, but uh, they make decisions and based on uh, technical reviews that I will explain later. So uh, if we look at the summary of uh, these uh, years, more than 600 million years, uh, dollars has been invested uh, during these years. Uh, and uh, it's important to say that since we, <coughs> uh, this cost sharing by the companies, uh, at least 50% uh, cost sharing, as if we take 50% cost, cost sharing, the total investment uh, on projects is uh, $1.2 billion. Uh, more than a thousand projects have been approved since, in, uh, since uh, the establishment of the Bell Foundation. We have a repayment mechanism for uh, successful projects repay. So it's close to $200 million. And this, the last uh, bullet is the most important number. Uh, that's a figure that uh, includes the sales of successful projects funded by BERT, close to more than $10 billion since, since uh, the establishment, since inception. Now, from the point of view of uh, in sectors, the BERT Foundation is actually agnostic to sectors, uh, funds every sector. And this is dynamic, okay? If you look uh, back, let's say 10 years or maybe a little bit more, the communication sector was much larger than today. Uh, and today you see, for example, a large number of projects in the energy, water, and environment sector. And that's because we have a specific program for energy. And also uh, life sciences is a large, is re a, le a relatively large uh, sector in our life sciences, healthcare is a relatively large sector. Uh, in our portfolio. Um, now, this, uh, is, this chart shows uh, the result of a, an impact study that uh, was performed by an outside company um, in 2020. And it shows 10 major benefits, six of them identified by the companies that participated in the program, and four of them identified by stakeholders. Uh, hundreds of companies from the US and Israel were interviewed. And I think it's interesting to see what are the main three uh, benefits identified by company. The first one is risk sharing, which is quite clear because we provide funding. The second is improved partnerships. And I think that's very interesting to see here because the companies see as a benefit in their partnerships uh, when uh, working with the bird. So, they see that the Bell Foundation um, process funding helps their, their partnerships, which is a US-Israeli partnership. And the third the major uh, benefit is the access to innovative technology. There are others, uh, as you can see here, but I think the first three should be considered the most important ones. And then as you as you'll see in the next uh, minutes, uh, I'll explain why that happens. So how does it work? Two companies, an Israeli company and a US company, uh, submit a joint proposal. So when uh, companies come to the Bell Foundation, they, they need to come together. Uh, they need to have a partnership. They don't, have to, they, they don't need to have a formal agreement, but they need to decide that they submit together. Uh, and they submit a proposal uh, using uh, our proposal template. And uh, if they're successful in the process, because this is a competitive process, they can get a conditional grant, we call it, up to a million dollars per project. Actually, at least today, 
uh, is a very, I would say, an outstanding project can get up to $1.5 million, not more than 50% of the total uh, cost of the project. Okay, so there's a, the maximum uh, uh, grant is 1.5, not more than 50% of the total uh, budget. The budget is the sum of the budget of both, of both uh, companies. Now, if the project uh, reaches sales, there is a repayment mechanism. I can talk about it. But if unfortunately the project does not succeed, or meaning that it doesn't get to commercial sales, then it becomes a grant. That, that's why we call it a conditional grant. And that's why the companies say that there is risk sharing. Okay, but in addition to that, all this process, which uh, uh, to some people may, may, may look like cumbersome, um, it's a facilitator of the partnership. I can tell you that uh, in uh, different studies we did, about 50% of the projects that don't get to sales, the reasons are related to the partnership or, with, or to the companies, not to technology and not to, in, and not to the market. And everyone knows, I think, everyone that has been around for a while, that partnerships are not easy to manage, especially if you're talking about companies from different uh, countries. So BERT has been a, an element of uh, or a, a facilitator of partnership. That's why the second benefit you saw in the previous chart says improved partnership, okay? And why access to innovation? In many cases, that, that response comes from the US companies because the US companies are seeking for innovation in the Israeli side, in the Israeli, in the, in the Israeli company. But I can tell you that uh, in recent years, since the high tech sector in Israel has matured so much, uh, it's the, always the opposite. It's also the opposite. You can see Israeli companies seeking uh, innovation in the US side, okay? When uh, the Bell Foundation was established, uh, of course, the main uh, combination was a large US company and a smaller Israeli company. Today, we have all kinds of uh, combination. You can have a small US company with a larger Israeli company. So we have a call for proposals every six months. And also we have two other programs, but let's uh, focus on the next call for proposals for you. Uh, the deadline is pretty close, March 1, and there's a two-stage two process. So we have an executive summary, a very short, uh, simple document that has to be submitted by both companies. That's the first step. Decisions are in June. So if you can see that it takes a very short time from this, the, the submission of the executive summary to the decision. Uh, however, the longer process, I can say, is not really submitting to the Bell Foundation, but is forming the partnership. Okay, in many cases we talk to companies uh, months or maybe a few, even a year before they submit, because forming a partnership is uh, certainly uh, not an easy endeavor. Now, People ask uh, what uh, the chances or the probability of winning uh, the grant. Uh, so look at the end of this chart uh, in the right hand side. It says approved project, close eight to 10 projects per cycle. Okay. And the submitted proposals are 20 to 25. So I would say 40% uh, when you get to the final stage. Of course, it's the first stage when you say, submit a signed executive summary, but that executive summary is a very simple document to uh, prepare. And it's uh, actually, there's no, no uh, very deep technical review of this document. We provide a recommendation to submit or not submit a proposal based on that executive summary. We want you to win. So we try to give you feedback if the, pro if the proposed project it has a good chance of succeeding uh, before preparing the full proposal, which is actually uh, quite, uh, you know, it's a, it's a large document. It's a business plan and an R&D plan. So not to waste the time of the companies if the, if the partnership is not mature enough or the combination doesn't sound uh, with synergy, we give, propose, we give feedback at the executive summary stage. So the evaluation criteria uh, has uh, actually four elements. Innovation is probably the most important one. 
and then synergy between the companies, a market opportunity, and of course, if uh, we want to see, or the, the board wants to see that there's a go-to-market strategy, strategy and commercialization. Uh, but if you look at uh, the four uh, elements here, certainly innovation and synergy between the companies are the most important ones. Okay, so uh, in addition to the, to the main program, and I won't go deep into these other options, but uh, you have to only get a feeling of it. We have other programs. We have one focus on energy, renewable energy and energy, energy efficiency called Build Energy. We have a program uh, called Build HLS focused on Homeland Security. And we also have a program that is uh, very different. It's called the US Israeli Energy Center. And that's uh, a different model uh, that is actually less relevant right now because uh, the call for proposals was completed and we have four consortia uh, working in the US Israeli Energy Center. However, Bird Energy and Bird HLS both have annual call for proposals, including 2022. Um, let me skip this too. So we're going to give you a couple of uh, exa examples of projects. Okay, uh, this is a bird energy pro uh, project, and you see a company. Maybe you know the company is called Brent Miller Energy. They developed the thermal storage technology. This is a this is a technology based on a, a solid state material, a, a crushed rocks, and the idea here is to is to store heat. And let's say when there, there is, uh, uh, there is uh, enough, ener enough electricity or enough uh, heat to store uh, at times that are uh, uh, when the electricity is cheaper or uh, in other situations and uh, deliver them when uh, there is demand. Uh, this technology has uh, been, develop been developed for a while. The project was to, uh, to install a a demonstration system with the partner, the US partner is the New York Power Authority, NYPA, in New York. So what I, the good news that we have is this project is just completed and they uh, installed the system at SUNY, in uh, purchase is called, in New York uh, and in New York, New York State. And uh, they will start, uh, the system will start functioning uh, soon. It's now already functioning, but the, it will be demonstrated during a period to show that it really brings the benefit that it uh, promises. So here you have a very innovative uh, storage technology that uh, Bird is helping to, uh, to bring to the market. So we are funding, actually, you can say the end leg of the development plus uh, the, the demonstration or the initial demonstration. Another uh, interesting uh, project, I would say, because of this of the topic, is uh, in construction tech. And this uh, the Israeli company is called Manam Applications, and the US, the US company is uh, um, a drone company called ABSI, and from Nevada. And what they develop is a system uh, using drones to inspect bridges. Bridges Today, bridge inspection in the US is done by uh, uh, you know, uh, workers, people, uh, technical people that have to climb and it's very dangerous. And it's done uh, in a very, let's say, relatively old fashioned way. Okay, taking photos, uh, drawing diagrams, and this system Com uh, completely uh, replaces that by using drones. It's a revolutionary solution. Okay, it's, uh, it was uh, developed uh, jointly uh, by these two companies, and it's now it was demonstrated in bridges in Nevada, and now it's being uh, marketed. So uh, successful development, and it's now being marketed uh, across the U.S. specifically across the U.S. You can see the bridge, one of the bridges where this was uh, um, demonstrated in, the, uh, in Nevada. And this uh, demonstration was done with the uh, proper um, offices of uh, the state that do the inspection. Uh, another technology, agro-technology, agro and this is a recent project. And again, it's using uh, drones 
uh, Algo Scout is an AI company that developed the uh, algorithms uh, to detect uh, crop diseases. And Burstop, a company from Washington State, developed uh, something that you can say is similar uh, to inspect the uh, crops and inspect uh, 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 agricultural areas. But they didn't, they didn't have the intelligence that Algo Scout can bring. A great combination. So they are developing, actually, this project is ongoing. They are developing a joint system. So we have, we have a, a US company that brings technology or working, a working system, actually, with, that, with UAVs, and AgroScout that brings a, an AI capability. They integrate it together, or they're integrating together the system. And they already did a demonstration in Washington State. There's a great video showing the results. Finally, in examples, I can show you some uh, life sciences, medical, medical devices. Uh, these are three ex extremely successful projects. Uh, the first one is a company, well-known company in Israel called Insight Tech that developed uh, a, a, an MR, a magnetic resonance guided, guided uh, technology uh, for, for ultrasound uh, non-invasive brain surgery. Uh, this uh, the partner is a partner that uh, had uh, access to the, to uh, clinical studies, but also could support the clinical studies, and also support the FDA process. And so this project was uh, again successful. They completed the development. They received FDA approval, and show has shown incredible results in. Um, in, uh, uh, in, in patients with what is called essential tremor, uh, people that could not hold a glass of water, and after the surgery came out from the surgery, uh, being able to um, work naturally with their hands. The second one is an older project, but it's also a very successful uh, uh, drug that was developed for what is called intractable gout. Here, the Innovation came from the company in California, and the Israeli company was actually supporting the clinical trials. So uh, you can see here the opposite model. Sorry for the terrible image, but that's the disease. And Christexa, the drug, uh, resolves the, that problem for people that cannot, uh, that the, the regular gout uh, uh, drugs uh, do not work for them. And the, in the right hand side, it's a well-known company called Rewalk, um, very successful also, that uh, system, a robotic system that uh, was developed uh, to allow paralyzed people to uh, stand up and walk. Uh, they did with BIRD the, the, the final development and the clinical study, uh, getting the FDA. So here you have three projects in which uh, BIRD supported the actually quite the final stages of the development and the FDA process uh, to get approval. Um, so finally, I can say why bird, okay? You can ask why bird. It's a question that uh, probably comes up to your mind. Of course, uh, people can decide to apply or not, but uh, I think that uh, uh, clearly uh, there are at least four points to do that. One is that uh, we fund the advanced technologies and we generally fund projects that are uh, more risky or riskier than riskier than let's say uh, low risk projects. Uh, low, low risk projects should not apply to BERT in general. Although when you, we say low risk projects are also risk related to partnership and market, but uh, generally if you come with a technology that uh, is not uh, let's say high risk, uh, the chances of succeeding in the process are lower. A risk sharing mechanism, I talked about that, stamp of approval. And this is something that uh, we hear a lot from companies, uh, both uh, from the US and Israel, saying that uh, they use the fact that they got a bird fund, a bird, uh, a bird grant to, for example, increase their chances of raising funding from investors. And the uh, last, last but not least is the commitment, a joint commitment uh, to delivery and time to market. Uh, because, um, in, in essence, uh, we continue to uh, monitor the projects and, uh, in general, um, there is that idea that both companies have a, a joint commitment 
uh, for uh, uh, succeeding in delivering to the market. We have a website, but in addition to the website, which is not this one, there is a website that uh, provides information about all the projects that were approved from the very beginning. And you can easily find some uh, their projects uh, uh, by sector, uh, by US location, and by year. It's an interesting uh, exercise to look for companies and look for, uh, for projects. Uh, back to the beginning. To, to 1977. And uh, my final words will be on uh, the future. We're working now on a proposal uh, jointly with the Binational Science Foundation and with the Binational Agricultural Research and Development Foundation. Those two foundations are academic foundations. They fund researchers, not companies. And we are working with them on a proposal uh, for climate solutions. U.S. Israel are in the center for climate solutions. We hope to launch this uh, in the upcoming year based on an agreement that uh, hopefully will be signed between uh, Israel and the U.S. Okay, thanks very much. I will stop here. So I think uh, this now, now is time for everybody to uh, ask questions. And I know uh, there probably are uh, some questions, but I, there were some questions. Uh, I'll kickstart because we know that the first question is always the hardest. Uh, and there were there were some discussions that the working community, the WhatsApp uh, community, Eitan, I uh, mentioned before uh, around, you know, uh, BIRD being a semi or government organization and bureaucracy is always a concern. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, how hard it is uh, should we be concerned about bureaucracy? What are birds' ways to uh, manage that and, and help entrepreneurs or, or companies that, that submit? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, first of all, yeah. one advantage of bird is because of the structure I uh, explained, uh, we are not really a government agency, okay? So we are a, more like a corporation of course, our funding comes from the government and it's public funding, so we have to handle it very carefully. But um, for example, let me give you, I think it's a very good example. When it comes to signing contracts, uh, there, we have the authority to sign contracts uh, without any additional signature. That's not something you find in a, in a government agency. But I would say that more than that, we are very motivated to uh, reduce uh, the bureaucracy, okay? It's a part of our, let's say, culture. We have a process that I don't think it's harder than getting money from a, from a venture fund. I would say easier, okay? Of course, we get, maybe you get less funding, but um, I don't think uh, you can get a million dollars from someone without some kind of negotiation and contracts and, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. In addition, we don't get any equity, okay? So we don't have any equity on the company. Um, and this is a, ma a very important factor. When you get a million dollars from uh, a, an investor, you give equity up. We, we don't ask for equity. So we need to, on the other side, the governments and, uh, require, uh, or not the governments, okay? The foundation requires uh, to uh, repay if there is success. So we need to have a contract for that. So I would say, if you ask me, um, even from that study that I mentioned, uh, no word about bureaucracy really was incredible. We didn't get any negative feedback on bureaucracy. Okay. Um, so from time to time, things uh, get complicated, not because of our bureaucracy, but because of the relationship between the companies, and that's actually the opposite. Once you, uh, you have birth support, uh, that, uh, pro those problems can be maybe easier, uh, in, a, in an easier way solved because you have the commitment to birth. Uh, in summary, and also I don't want to talk about other organizations, uh, the feedback we get is that uh, relative to what you get uh, is quite friendly. Maybe the last point I must, I must uh, communi uh, communicate, 
especially to the U.S. Uh, audience, um, there is a close relationship with the team here. So this is not like buy and forget, submit, upload. You can talk to us like you're talking to me now. Anyone can call my phone and ask for a question or and we answer to all questions. So I think uh, at the end of the day, the experience uh, is quite positive. And I, I'm here 16 years and I can tell you that uh, from time to time we get complaints, okay? But I can tell you it's, it's, that's something that happens uh, not so much. Great, uh, any questions? I know there's uh, questions on the chat. I will ask it uh, if nobody else will, but uh, any questions? Yes, a question here. Does Bird also facilitate the matchmaking between US and Israeli companies? A very good question. Uh, we do a lot of matchmaking. It's part of our uh, daily work. Okay, so uh, companies come to us and ask if we can help with the partners, uh, with the we find a partner. Now, in this context, uh, or the answer, in this, uh, to this question, I will also uh, tell you that uh, we have representatives in the US. And uh, since we're talking about Wharton here, Wharton, we have a representative in Philadelphia, the, the executive director of the Philadelphia uh, Israel Chamber of Commerce. Her name is uh, Beret Nohi. She represents Beret in Philadelphia, Delaware, and South uh, New Jersey. And I can tell you that, for example, if, if an Israeli company comes to us and uh, we're looking to help them with partners, we use our team or representatives in the US to do that. So we do that a lot. Also the other way, we go to US companies and companies may give us a wish list of uh, technologies that they're seeking. And we also close that loop. Having said that, we are a small team. So you cannot expect us to do all your work you need to do. Uh, so this is a joint effort and uh, we expect the companies to uh, of course, understand what type of what type of partnership they're looking for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, the, the short answer is yes, but it's a, a joint effort. Ethan, uh, one thing that came up uh, on private, and I, I would like to reiterate if, for those of you who didn't hear, uh, yes, there is a recording of the session, and we will share it later on. So uh, no worries if you missed anything or you would like to rehear uh, some portions, no problem. There's here another question. What does Bird to do marketing? To do for marketing. What does Bird do for marketing? Okay, in essence, we are not supposed to fund the marketing. Okay. However, uh, we can accept uh, some marketing ex expenses, initial marketing expenses. For example, if the companies want to participate in an exhibition, uh, that we can fund. It cannot be massive funding. We cannot fund, for example, uh, uh, the, the process of finding a distributor or things like that. But uh, we, can, we can fund a certain amount of uh, a percentage of the budget uh, that relates to marketing. Marketing in a very broad sense, okay? If you need to go and do a demo, uh, we will certainly support that. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Aiden, uh, one, one thing that came up, and uh, I think this is uh, related to your former answer about uh, helping to find partners. Uh, something that came up uh, is actually a word of praise from some Wharton alums that used uh, or had some bird con uh, uh, projects uh, was the bird stamp ability to help them find better, better partners or to elevate the Israeli company's brand in, uh, and, and get the partnership, uh, the relationship with the American company better. Can you talk a little bit about uh, not only the ability to find partners, but also how does the this process actually help you if you have a strategic, uh, okay. you know, collaborator, a partner, and how, you yeah. know, just from your experience? Okay, so there are two phases here. Let's say, I, give me, give you, uh, I think one uh, good answer is that in many cases, when an Israeli company approaches, let's say a large US company um, with a technology or with a capability, uh, the fact that uh, let's say the company is hesitating, in many cases it's related to, for example, they may have the company, the large youth company, 
may have an internal solution being developed, or they may be working with some other company on a similar problem or even similar technology. Uh, so the, everything gets stuck because, and you may even don't know why. I mean, you may be you may be in the dark because you don't know why. But then when you come to the youth company and you say, look, uh, we, there is this Bell Foundation that can help us uh, fund part of the effort. Uh, in many cases, that helps uh, uh, the US company, uh, get, or let's say the champion within the US company to uh, get a positive answer. Because the amount of funding now, that now the US partner needs to invest on this new solution is lower and uh, it reduces the risk. And it's incredible to see that even a million dollars, and don't forget that a million dollars is split between the two companies. And it's uh, incredible to see that in some cases, a million dollars or can be helpful to uh, get that partner on board. It facilitates the decision of uh, the company. Or sometimes you come to a company and they have all their R&D funds funds, internal R&D funds already committed. So they say, we want to work with you, but all our R&D fund is already committed. So what do we do? And then you say, there's the Bell Foundation. Maybe they can help us uh, to fund part of the, of the effort. That's one, uh, that's one, uh, one type of uh, facilitation. Stamp of approval is also important when you're looking for investors. In, in you know, some cases, investors are waiting to see, okay, here. And you can see companies that uh, have, uh, have a prototype and they are now looking for a, maybe first round or second round of funding, probably first round. And uh, uh, they are close to the Death Valley. That's, the, you know, that's where they are. Um, and here, and they're looking for investors. The fact that they win a grant and they come and they have a partner in the US can help the investors jump on board and decide that they will go ahead with this. In some cases, we've seen even conditioned. The, the investors see that this is happening and they say, if you win the grant, we will go uh, with you uh, on, on, this, uh, on this venture. Okay? Yes. So. So Dob, Dob, Dob Och, uh, just wrote that he works uh, with Bird in Virginia. Hi, Dob, how are you doing? <laughs> Great. Okay, thanks, Eitan. Well, thank you. Okay. I also just shared my email for those of you who are not on the Wharton Israel uh, group and uh, later on maybe don't have the way to find the uh, recording, you can email me and I'll, I'll make sure to send this to you as well. So whoever wants uh, later on, just email me. Yeah, I'll, I'll just chime in, uh, Eitan. Um, um, it, it, the last trench or certainly over the summer, I think two of the six projects that Bird uh, um, granted money to were in Virginia. I work with the government in Virginia, and and I'll say that really uh, they were up and running and fully baked, and and very strong synergies and very strong relationships to the point where I think a month or two after one of the projects was granted, there was already a a, a JV with a joint company um, between the two parties. One was Milstat, Milsat, uh, if you remember, Ita. So um, um, when when they do. Albeit it's R and D, when they do hit the path, they seem to be very well strong synergies and. And, and very robust partnership. Now, I, work, I work for the governor of Virginia, so uh, if there's anything in the footprint here uh, from the Israeli side, we're happy to find you a viable U.S. partner. Okay. Any other questions from uh, our audience? And if not, uh, I think maybe some people would be worried about asking maybe uh, specific questions about their company. Uh, Eitan, you, you and your team are very open to uh, having people reach out to you, right? So we will of share, of share the con contacts uh, for you anybody who's share, interested. You can share the contacts and uh, uh, people can approach us and we will certainly uh, engage with them and uh, answer any questions uh, they may have. I see that... Uh, 
someone I don't, I don't see last name. I joined late. Uh, by the way, I personally, I don't fish pain. I, I don't. Uh, Hi there. Hi. So you worked on, 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 on Chris Texa when I was at BTG. Great. Yeah, a long time ago. Yes, long time ago. Uh, we, we see that as a very successful project from the past. Incidentally, yeah. uh, all these projects that uh, uh, were uh, reached uh, full uh, FDA approval and commercialization, of course, uh, repaid nicely. And the repayments uh, go back to our mm -hmm. budget so we can continue funding projects. So this is not uh, a for-profit organization, okay? We get repayments and uh, those 20% uh, of our budget comes from uh, repayments. Okay. And I would like to add, I was involved many years ago on a project together with j, &J. This was Ness Israel together with j, &J and we enjoyed every minute and uh, all the people involved, including the American side, are still very good friends and partners. Later on, they invested in other companies of Teuza, which shows how much they believe in what happened. Thank you, Avi. And uh, let me say that uh, from one side, uh, Bird has supported projects uh, like the one Avi is uh, mentioning uh, with large companies in the US. And that, as I said, at, at some point, uh, that, that, that was the typical model, a large company in the US and a small company in Israel. Today, we are open to all kinds of combinations. It's important to say that because uh, in the minds of some people, uh, the U.S. company must be a large company. Uh, that's not uh, so anymore. Um, actually, the, the projects that I presented, uh, the one in construction tech and the one uh, in agrotech, they're both uh, in, with small companies in the U.S., not large companies. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ethan. Uh, Gil, thank you so much for leading the event. To, to adjourn everyone, I, I, I really enjoyed the event. I learned a lot. Again, thank you, Aitan, for leading this. Uh, just before we head out, I would take the, time, the two minutes to thank everyone and also remind that in the next month, we have two additional Work in Israeli events. On the second week of March, we're going to have the Work in Israel track coming to Israel. They're going to lead 250 students to 10 days in Israel, and they're going to do an alumni happy hour. So more information on that. And on March 25th, we're going to have our Tulip and Winery Tour up north. And uh, you're going to get some more information on the email on that. So put those two in your calendar. And it's great to see everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Great day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Eitan. Bye-bye.